Okay, so basic workings of a turbocharger. You have two of these bearings that sit inside of this CH, well, this is the this main hub of the CHRA. There's one down inside there, then there's this one, and they just sit through like this. That's a really, really tight fit. And then that spins on the other side of this is the compressor. So this is called the turbine. This is the compressor wheel. As your exhaust blows, it hits the edges here and then exits off this edge to exit the turbocharger on this side. So it blows out past here. So hitting these wheel tips spins the compressor, which is this part here. And then that sucks in air just like a propeller. The compressor housing looks like this. The compressor sits down with a very tight clearance. You can see the blades. And as it spins, the air flings off of these tips here and it flings outwards. So it's instead of blowing a, like a direction, it just blows outwards. As that outwards air hits this, the reason it's shaped like a snail is if you look inside here, you can see it's really shallow. The little bit of air hits here. More air is gathering because it's spraying in all directions, right? So there's a little bit that gathers here more gathers here all the way around until the most gathers here and this converts that outward action into a uh, velocity that comes out of the um, outlet of your compressor this then blows into the engine so this snail appearance is just because there's less air being gathered here and more air get being gathered there and it's that tight clearance that enables it to fling that air outwards and then uh, charge the engine. In the CHRA, there's, in this case, this is water cooled, so it has a water in and a water out. Then it has an oil in and an oil out. And you see how big the oil out is, is that sits downwards and it's just a gravity like this pouring oil in the top and then it just pours out of the bottom, okay? So in this case, my um, compressor, I probably oversped it, but it could have also been an oiling issue. But I broke off a fin here, if you see that. And if you look, right where that fin's broken off, there's actually a little bit of, a little bit of brass that's stuck on the turbine shaft. And that's from this journal bearing. So maybe it was oil starved, or maybe it was warped a little bit, or maybe just the unbalance of that broken blade caused it to push more here. And uh, so anyway, so instead of, uh, so I could get like new uh, journal bearings and a new turbine shaft, and I could have my, I have a new one of these. I could have my new compressor wheel put on and I could have the whole CHRA balanced. Or for a similar price, I could buy a whole new CHRA and then just put that into the turbo. All right, so the way the turbine works, so you have the turbine housing here. The turbine wheel sits in there just like that. Your exhaust gases come in here. Let me just shine a flashlight in there real fast. All right, so your exhaust gases come in this side and they, they do the opposite movement where before I had the compressor blowing into this channel. In this case, the exhaust is blowing out of that channel and the exhaust is trying to then exit through here to get down your downpipe and out of the car. So you can see a pretty tight fit. Um, and so those you're changing the velocity is like you're changing the flow from coming in here to now it blows in and it floods through the blades 
and it spins this um, on that side. So as you're driving, you normally have a wastegate um, uh, actuator on here and it has a spring that as you get boost pressure, um, it begins uh, overpowering that spring and forcing this open. And when that forces it open, that allows the exhaust gas to come straight in from here and exit to your downpipe right away, instead of going through all the effort of spinning the turbine wheel in here, it just goes straight out. Then it closes, seals that up, and then it starts spooling the turbine again. And so again, that just looks like that there. And um, yeah.